like to invite all our guest speakers to start with the panel discussion on sustainable HVAC myth versus reality. So, Mr. Rakhija, I would like to start with you. So, sustainability is a top point for everyone. How will you evaluate sustainable HVAC systems in India? To me, a sustainable HVAC solution is which integrates with the with the nature. When we are able to use uh, what our mother nature gives to us to the maximum into our design and the shortfall is what we need through the mechanical mean, through the electromechanical mean, is when we receive, when we achieve a sustainable HVAC solution. So that's how I look at it. And that's what I showed in the example of the case study which I presented that look, nearly six months in a year in my own building, we don't require any air conditioners to work. And that has helped us to bring down the energy consumption, the carbon emissions, and the carbon footprint of the car. And I like to believe that we are moving in, in a sustainable HVAC solution direction. Thank you. Mr. Patel, would you like to add something to this? Yeah. As I said, for me, for me sustainability is a step-by-step -step approach. It's not like you have a single component or a single it's, it's a system which works together and it's it's a complete system integration as said by mr ashish rakheja that and 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 that system should not be harmful to the mother nature so, so basically the product should be biodegradable the manufacturing of the product should be as such that it has lo less carbon footprint emission so all those components put together will bring sustainability. It's just not a single thing or single action will, you know, contribute to that. That's from my side. We have a question for you, Mr. Patel, from Mr. Pranoy Call. The question is how do how to measure effectiveness of thermal insulation? If I say about thermal insulation for cold application, now uh, there are a lot many parameters on which the insulation has been designed. Basically thermal conductivity, the relative, uh, the type of application which is indoor or outdoor. If I talk about the new construction, the new project if you talk about, then we have to design based on the this factors. Now, I, I suppose uh, that the question also says that how if we want to show something so my client that how thermal insulation can reduce cooling load during peak hours. So basically, the, the insulation thickness should be considered into picture the type of covering system that has been being used over the system. The how ease of installation is because there are a lot of insulation generic which can be used on the application of ducting piping. So, so basically, it's not a, just a single factor. But yes, the the the, the insulation which has optimum thermal conductivity which has uh, which can comply fire standard or having the ease of installation you have to go for that selection of insulation and then you can give give those calculations to the client based on that where he can select the insulation generally to be used i hope this suffice the answer thank you mr patel Moving on to Mr. Avesh, what is your opinion about smart design and its influence on sustainability? A smart design is a very big buzzword, okay? Today, if you go to industry, everybody wants smart, everybody wants green. But if you go to the integrity of their smart design is basically the customer comfort or let me use the word for healthy living, okay? In whatever environment, whoever is there, whoever is occupying the area, it should be a healthy living. Healthy living in terms of for what Ashish Bhai says about the 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 comfort the metabolism the temperature the humidity and of course the lighting because daylight harvesting also very important you should use minimum artificial light when you are in in, in the particular area so again a smart design is conservation of energy conservation of water how you do the treatment of the water so all summation goes to healthy living and that is defined as a smart design smart design not that it is an energy buzzer we, we don't want to keep a temperature setting of 18 degree. As per the, even today, I think Ashish Bhai agree that as per the latest, uh, you know, as per the standard, 
the 27 degree temperature is one of the most convenient temperature for a person to work inside in a, in a normal atmosphere like is the office or in a college or etc so i think we, we don't want 18 degree even today if you see the data center earlier the data center was 18 degree temperature but if you really see the data center also can work on 27 degree centigrade so it is it is a smart design Without compromising the comfort of a, of a person, if you design the system, it is a smart design. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. So, Mr. Patel, why is sustainable cooling important and can thermal control technology, including insulation, ensure the HVAC system is sustainable? Yeah. See, thermal insulation, as I said, if you have an optimized design, so it is designed for a particular temperature so that we get on the inside edge. As we see the human comfort, Temperature is around 24, 25 degrees and you require the desired humidity. Now, if the transport system, which are not been perfectly insulated or which is the size of oversize or not many factors are there in the application. So it will not give the desired temperature at the required point. So, so basically it will what what you will do if the temperature there's a lot of heat loss on the transport line then you need to more put more power in chiller and cooling load will increase so in turn what is happening is the amount of energy has been lost during the transportation so that that's that's a factor where the insulation will play that you know if you if you have the right selection optimized selection then you can also reduce the load on the chiller so that Whatever is required with the minimum energy loss, you get the desired temperature and condition. So this is how it will add to the sustainability of the system. That you, you reduce the losses during the transportation of supply. I agree with Hiten. One more thing, the selection of thickness of the insulation is very important. Because the same thickness of insulation in Mumbai or a coastal area is not as the same thickness in the area like Nagpur and Latur. So, the, the thermal insulation is the parameter of the moisture, okay. So, I think when you select the thickness of the insulation material for pipe or duct, you should be very much aware about what is the environment, what is the location of your uh, your area, either on a coastal area or on a, on a hot and humid, hot and dry area, it's very important. So, I think, Hiten, can you focus on this, how, how to select the insulation as far as the type of area is concerned? Hiten, can you just uh, yeah. uh, some clarify on this? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, thank you for bringing this point, Mr. Bhavesh. Now, if we talk about insulation, basically the primary criteria is whether it is coastal or non-coastal. Then secondly, we need to consider the application, whether it is a hotel, has a different design to thickness. Uh, if it's a hospital, then you require insulation thickness, wherein you also require antimicrobial properties. So there are a lot many factors you need to analyze first. And yes, the insulation thickness will vary if it's a postal and non-postal. So it is, it is not the same if a, if a hospital coming up in Mumbai will have same insulation thickness of a hospital coming up in Ahmedabad. Because Mumbai is a, a highly humid, it's a non-postal, it's considered as non-postal. Like Ahmedabad, it's a dry state. So basically the thickness of insulation will reduce. So So this is where we need to take care that you need not compare that the similar thickness will work at the places, but different places, different location, the thickness of insulation will vary and it varies a lot. So, so basically we need to keep a check on. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Patel for covering up the insulation topic. Moving on to next question, Mr. Ashish, can you let us know what initiatives and measures such as passive cooling can be adopted to accelerate energy efficiency in the HVAC industry? Nearly. 20% of the cooling load of the building is dependent on the architecture design. It's how we design the building. And it also includes the, the optimizing the heat gain which happens from the facades and the way the building is oriented, the shading devices. So the envelope and all the passive measures contribute nearly 20% of the cooling load. So once we are, once we work, closely with the architects, help them analyze the building performance, which is under design using tools like digital twins. We can arrive at conscious decisions 
an educated decision on how the building should be planned. Once you've done that, once the passive design features are right, then one can even go further to install what I say the best of the technical equipment, including planning the insulation, what Hithen has been has, has advocated. Uh, one can look at the best COP machines, chillers, high efficiency pumps. One can look at the variable frequency drives, i.e. five motors. You know, we can do all of that. The biggest challenge when, whenever we talk about Avesh Pai very rightly brought out that the green building costs less. And I fully endorse that point of view. The problem is the green building costs more when you do not design the building as green. If you design the building wrongly and try to put technology to cut down the energy consumption, that's where the cost of the building goes up. If at the fundamental level itself, you are able to correct the building design, optimize the building design, and then apply these expensive electromechanical measures, you will in all likelihood find that the capital cost of the building comes down, if not equal to a normal building. So that's been the the experience and this is what Bavesh was trying to say. And of course, on, to, on top of it, if you put good insulation, it helps you in the operation cost saving. So that's, that's where I come from. Thank you. Well, Mr. Mehta, would you like to share your views on what steps can be taken to increase sustainable HVAC efficiency solutions? So any HVAC system, even though you design the builds with best IKW, IPLV, whatever parameter you discover, VFD and all, but Unless and until you do the proper maintenance of the HVAC system, like like cleaning of filter for AHU, like in our home, we have split machine, okay? If if you don't clean the filter periodically, in spite of you install five-star machines, it will not work because the, ultimately the, the filter is chopped, it will not get a proper airflow, it will be low, lower airflow, increase steric pressure, pressure drop and all. So the first thing is very important, the regular periodically maintenance of the HVAC system recommended by original equipment manufacturer should be religiously followed. That is the very first thing. And believe me, I in, in Reliance also, we are we are rigidly, we are strictly saying to the store people that unless and until you clean the filter, see filter cleaning is is just a silly thing, let me tell you. Remove the filter, wash with the wash with the the jet. Okay. So this that's the very first thing. Number one. Number two, the regular acha there should not be increase of uh, atmospheric air into your office or your store or your area because migration of uh, if you open the door like suppose if your house or if your commercial building or hospital when i go from atmosphere to my area through a glass door there should be proper air curtain should be provided air curtain is an artificial wall which will create between the non ac and ac area so second thing air curtain has to be provided between AC and non-AC area to ultimately reduce the migration of the cold air. There is number two. Number three, nowadays if you re, if you see there are glass facades designed by the architects. Now glass is a, glass is the enemy of an air conditioning system. Okay, more the glass, thinner the glass or not right type of glass will increase the thermal heat transfer due to conduction, conversion and radiation. Ultimately it will increase your operating cost. So, you should provide us the right type of solar film or you should select the right type of glass with a low E. Low E glasses is uh, available like by St. Robin or Asahi or any of the reputed glass manufacturer. So, these are the four parameters. If you strictly maintain this particular thing, I'm sure that you will be able to get the desired result you have planned at the design stage. I once again, once again repeat, air curtain, cleaning of filter, solar panel and uh, and uh, my uh, to, uh, to reduce the migration of the air these are the things which very much important required thank you mr mehta for sharing your views on sustainable hvac efficiency solutions coming to mr uh, patel what is your opinion about sensors for equipment monitoring in commercial and residential help conserve energy okay so basically the sensors i i don't have much information on the sensors so i would put in a shorter way that yes there should be a monitoring uh, system wherein you know it shows the performance of the system where we can we can analyze whether we need to upgrade or uh, you know change the particular system or a component for that sensors definitely will contribute if you see because i am already connected to lot many my stores 
where the sensor has been provided. So now the sensor has to be provided along with the controller. Sensor is not the only thing which will which will uh, uh, optimize the conservation, energy conservation and all. But sensor, say, suppose there is a, see the hypothetical example of an air handling unit. Or, okay, or of a, of a ceiling suspended the deluxe ductable unit. It's a sim very simple example. So when you have a ceiling suspended ductable, uh, ductable unit which is mounted on the ceiling at the ceiling level, you connect with a small duct uh, which will air condition the certain area of say 3000, 4000 square feet. Now sensor, where to locate the sensor is very important. The location of sensor is very important. Ultimately, what is my aim? My aim is to optimize the power consumption without compromising the comfort of the employee or whomsoever is there. You provide a sensor first of the, first in the atmosphere. Okay, this one sensor which will measure the atmosphere temperature. Then the second sensor at the return air filter where you have provided. The next sensor is before the coil, after the coil, and at the supply area and the room area. There are a, and uh, there are six to seven sensors which we provide. I think Ashish, by you can add your values if I'm wrong. So the sensor. So ultimately, what is my aim? If my temperature setting is 24 degrees centigrade at the room, at the at the two and a half feet level from the ground level, ultimately the room temperature thermo the, the sensor will sense the room temperature and it will it will give alarm to the compressor to now. Okay. So if you have a variable frequency, you know, inverter compressor. Okay. Now, inverter compressor directly operating on the change in change of the frequency, a variable speed. So, it will it will tell your frequency if you tell your inverter system or controller that reduce the speed. So, if the temperature is achieved at 24 degrees centigrade without spending more energy by way of a full speed compressor, it will give a signal to the inverter to reduce the speed. So, this is the way how the sensor works. So, ultimately, the function is to optimize the power consumption without compromising the, the comfort of the, the people who are sitting there inside. This is the thing which, it's the same case for air tube. If you have a chill water air tube, you have a chill water control valve, the sensor will be provided inside the room. The sensor will operate, will, flow the, will control the flow of the chill water system, the chill water air tube, the water going to chill water in, inside the air tube, it will control the flow. So, very, so it's a variable flow of the chill water which is going into the, uh, going into the air tube or a variable flow of your uh, the refrigerant which goes into the evaporator coil. So these are the basic things. So the sensor, the your question, uh, sensor, how sensor uh, optimize, this is the function of a sensor ultimately to reduce the operating cost without compromising the comfort. Once again, why I repeat this word? Because customer's comfort is very much important. So we should never compromise your comfort wherever you are, either uh, either in a college or a university or, or a hospital or any or commercial building or a shopping mall. This is what my my summation. Thank you, Mr. Bhavi, for such an apt response. Mr. Patel, we have a question for you. The insulation applicator plays a crucial role in ensuring the correct installation of the proposed system. Can you elaborate it on it for Mr. Sandeep Shinde? Yeah. So, as as rightly said by Mr. Sandeep Shinde, or what's the role of the applicator? It is it is most important that. You have a you have a good product, but the application also plays equal or role in you know contributing towards the performance. So yes, you need to you need to work with the certified applicators. Most of the insulation companies they train the contractors, they certify them, and the, they have the proper certification. So you need to go along with the certified applicator. In case now nowadays due to some uh, commercial reason the the they go uh, they go with the applicator who is not certified so what, what will happen in turn uh, is it will affect the performance of the insulation you know placed over the ducting or piping and that will lead to due to the poor workmanship. There are a lot many factors apart from energy saving. The the water condensation will happen. It will, you know, like it, uh, spoil the interior part. We'll have the poor hygiene due to the water dripping over the surface. So you might see there are a lot many challenges which may come through. So yes, you need to 
uh, go with the certified applicators you need to contact the manufacturers wherein they can you know just just it, it's uh, it, it's it does not cost much then what the after effects are so so you can go with the certified applicator thank you mr patel so we have hit the end of the session uh, i would like mr ashish to give some concluding statements thank you darshna this was a wonderful discussion my special thanks to the thermal control maxi gopal krishna sir and for you to lead this kind of to bring these kind of topics into the into the focus of the industry and darshna thank you for wonderfully leading the entire discussion i think we we heard a diverse view uh, starting from a consulting engineer that i am where my focus was more on the design how can the design aspects need to be evolved and changed and looked at differently in case we want to go to sustainable future what hidden as a as a product supplier as a responsible company brought out the importance of the insulation and if we talk of the losses to prevent the losses the insulation is an important aspect very rightly pointed out that the climate the the city where we are in you cannot have one size fit all you cannot just say that let's put a big four inch insulation on everything no it doesn't work that way so one has to carefully review and install the insulation and which will help insulation which will help in, in preventing the energy losses and bhavesh the most important the user end user you know i'll design the building go away it then comes into the picture supplies the product and goes away is bhavesh who has to ultimately inherit what we design and then operate the building he was very eloquent in terms of uh, the the design features the operational features that need to go into it and the various aspects that must be taken into account by by all the stakeholders thank you bhavesh for endorsing the view that we we can go to higher temperatures because if we challenge the very concept of cooling and go to thermal comfort i think we are in for a sustainable future we are in for for to be in line with the carbon emission norms or the decarbonization target that our honorable prime minister selected so and thank you of course to the audience we had nearly 60 people who joined this today in this time somebody people coming online for a webinar i think a 60 number 60 people is a good number to have on the webinar so well done thank you so much to the audience i hope you got what you were looking for and thank you gopal krishna sir and dash darshna for for bringing this topic in front thank you thank you panelists for exchanging your valuable thoughts on today's sustainable hvac myths versus reality we hope you enjoyed the session thoroughly before wrapping up today's session we would like to thank our distinguished panelists mr ashish rakheja mr hitain patel and mr bhavesh mehta i would like to thank mr gobal anand for taking this initiative we request our delegates and viewers to stay connected with us on our social media handle thermal control magazine is available on facebook twitter and instagram you can also download our app from google play and app store with this we want to announce the closing of today's session request you to stay tuned for more such sessions thank you and goodbye